This hey is hi there. This is Clifford from uh, Cliff's List, and uh, this is kind of the first uh, interview I've done in quite a while. But today I have a special guest, uh, Tobias Omega, who is in Barcelona, Spain, as we sit here right now, and he is my uh, latest interview subject. And I'm sure we're going to learn a lot of interesting things from from his perspective. Um, so, Tobias, maybe we can start off with you just giving us a little bit of an introduction about yourself and your your history and and, and what you're doing and everything. Yeah, first of all, uh, thanks for the introduction. And uh, yeah, my name is Tobias, or Toby as well. I'm originally German, 29 years old. I left Germany when I was 21 already. Lived one year in Australia and then lived in six, seven different countries, but ended up in Spain permanently because now I have a dog. And uh, yeah, I do, I do men's coaching, dating coaching. And uh, I got into this because, uh, yeah, I used to struggle a lot when I was young with social anxiety, with just getting along with with people, you know, and um, just getting what I thought I was capable of getting. There was always this, the last, the last missing piece was always, yeah, there was always a last missing piece. And um, then I made myself on the journey to, to find that piece. And I would say I, I found it. And uh, that's now I'm helping guys to to find that for themselves, you know, where they see there is a lot of potential and there was a lot of missed opportunities in the past. And now we don't want to repeat the same, the, the, the same past, right? Yeah. Okay, well, tell us a little bit more about your, your I guess, your history with women, like how, how it was in the past and uh, when things started to change and how it's changed and, you know, what were the sort of the big, aha moments that you've had yeah so i i grew up very in a very like christian household right so that was kind of difficult and like with my siblings it was difficult as well because they were kind of trying to yeah they were kind of bullying you could say like my siblings were bullying me i was never bullied in school per se but my siblings were more like hitting on me um not physically but um mentally and um, I was just, yeah, super, when I was young in puberty, I was like super anxious. I was super, because I was like low status as well when it comes to society, like my, my, my parents were super poor and we always struggled with the money. And there was a lot of just like self-doubt and just low confidence, a lot of negativity. And uh, I just, when I was 15, 16, I was like, something has to change because if nothing changes, like this is going to be one big hell, you know, because every kind of socializing was a big hell. You know, and I, even I played football all my life, like soccer, you would call it in the US or in, in Canada. And uh, I even was so afraid to go to in the in the dressing room and stuff because I was a really good football player. But the social aspect was hindering my success as well. You know, my anxiety, my, my shyness was basically hindering my success in football as well. And I knew that I had to find a solution. And that was like the missing piece. You know, I was always wondering and people when people in movies or when people were just like having conversations. Normal conversation. I was like, I was like in awe. I was like, oh my god, they can, they can have conversations without, without seeming to be super anxious, you know. And that was the start how I made myself into looking up like how to become more confident, how to become more, yeah, more confident. I, I, I found lots of books. I found meditation. I found the law of attraction, all this kind of stuff, right? And then a few days, a few years later, I um, met. Well, in school, I got, I got some attention from women because I was like kind of athletic, but because my self image was so low, I could never convert any into that into actual results basically with women. And that was another step how I became more focused on the, on the dating aspect because I got looks or I got attraction, but I couldn't do anything with it because I didn't know what to do because I was so shy and the social conditioning was all over the place. And that's how I got into yeah, I st first started like researching on YouTube and looking into it and just getting information. Some guys maybe know RSD, very old school, big company and got into that. And then I moved to Budapest, Hungary, and I really went hard. So I went out day and night, talked to women, actually got my first experiences. And that's basically where everything changed. And um, after that, I... Uh, yeah, I kept I kept traveling. I went to Brazil, to Colombia, to Mexico, and did the same thing there. Like talking in the day and night, talking to women, getting lots of experience. I always say you want to get the experience of an 85-year-old man in a few years. That's how you know 
you you're getting there fast. And um, yeah, fast fast forward to today. I'm 29. I've been I've been living in seven countries now. I'm based in Barcelona because I have a dog now, so I don't want to travel that much anymore. But I I've seen a lot. I've learned a lot, and it's been it's been a hell of a journey. And yeah, I lost basically I lost all my anxiety, social anxiety, approach anxiety, and I have very high confidence in my in my skills as a as a man when it comes to dating and uh, socializing. Is there something that you could pinpoint that um, made the difference? I mean, it's one thing to just go out and talk to women, and I and you know certainly having those experiences is is critical. But um, you know, a lot of people t- I've I've seen people who go out and talk to a lot of women, and they they just don't get anywhere doing that. Um, you know, there's there's and ev- it evolves. You know, so you start to uh, you start to find things that start to work. Like, what was it that maybe? dawned on you that made a difference? Mm, I think a lot of guys, they kind of have to look at how they, how their appearance as well, right? So that doesn't mean you have to be like model looking or anything, you know, but you kind of have to make sure that you, that you dress properly and that you groom properly as well, right? Because the first seconds, they're going to make a decision on you. Just like a beggar comes up to you in the street, you are like, you're like, I don't like, no, right? And it's the same if you don't have the basics done like grooming fashion then she's not going to give you the time of the day right so that's one big thing where i see most guys um forget because they run around approaching women but they look like a bum basically <laughs> and um that's one thing and then obviously like yeah how you go about the approach right? i always say the first seconds of the approach are the most important and right? how you how you approach and the speed you talk and if you give him space is uh, is key right so i would say fixing the basics which is grooming and fashion and then how the first seconds of the approach go, this is where most people fuck up. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, so what uh, what uh, occurred to you that, that made you sort of modify your own approach in the beginning from when it was not going well to starting to go well? Like you, you, you would do a lot of approaches and, and maybe I don't know what kind of results you had in the beginning. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, it's funny cause I actually remember one of the very first times I approached a woman and I was like, when she wasn't interested, I, I, I was just like really shocked because I know I'm such a nice guy. Why, why wasn't she interested? It just sort of surprised me, but, uh, I don't know. I, I spent a lot of time myself trying to, um, overcome, uh, the, the difficulties in, in creating the rapport that you have with, with someone that you just mm-hmm. met. Um, Yeah. So sorry, what was the question again? The first well, one. Basically, just what what um, happened with you in order to uh, how how did it develop that you know you went from probably approaching yeah. women and not getting results to starting to get the results? Yeah. Well, the thing is that in the beginning you're going to be very nervous, right? Because it's like you you're putting yourself out there in a new experience. It's basically jumping out of a plane. Like for your brain, it's like similar jumping out of a plane. Um, but if you keep doing it, you're going to be more relaxed. So your brain is going to be less on alert and the less on alert it is the more you can actually have a normal conversation right? so i would say the beginning you want to have a lot of repetition 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 because your brain has to basically calm down a bit right because if you are in this nervous state it's going to be very difficult to be charismatic in a fight or flight response at the same time right? so that's why i said repetition repetition and then also making sure i would record myself as well I would try to record myself with your phone or something in your in your pocket, maybe here, and record and listen to it and be like, okay, I could have, I could, I've, I repeated myself, I could have done that, I could have done that. All right, so that's that's probably the the best thing. I would say the repetition is the biggest thing. Um, and yeah, one big thing is also don't don't overindulge in in content. If you're watching content all the time on YouTube, you're gonna just have be in your head even more. That's also one thing I, I think is it happens a lot because you're going to be there and you're like, well, I didn't do this. I didn't do that. And then you're out of the moment. But you what you want to be, you want to be in the moment. What do you what do you think about when you go up to a woman for the first time? Uh, and is that the primary method that you teach guys to meet women is just to approach them in cold or, or do you use other other elements uh, you know i'm going to ask you about online game and other things too but you know I'm, I'm just curious if that's your focus of your your coaching 
I actually teach everything. Yeah. So I I teach online. I teach cold approach. Right. These are these are basically the, the, the two biggest ways to meet people. I would say, um, because social circle. Yeah, that that happens anyway. Right. Like if you meet people in university, you you would have met them anyway. But yeah, cold approach and online. Um, that's really what I what I teach. And yeah, online is is quite straightforward. It's basically all about how you portray yourself. You know, you can't because you can't talk, you can't show anything. And then when it comes to code approach, it's yeah, it's all about repetition and uh, in a game. Yeah. So how do you uh, do? You have some particular tips that you give to your your students in order to build their confidence to get them approaching when they're when they're shy or introverted. Yeah, as you get back to your first question, was like how do I felt? What did I? How did I feel about my first approach? Right. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, terrifying. You know, terrifying. Exactly. And that's like something you have to accept. That's going to be terrifying. But also things that are terrifying after you did them, they are like exhilarating. Right? You're like, oh, fuck it. Oh, I did it. You know, I, I actually did it. So tips and tricks is desensitization, right? So if you if if you say, OK, I can't do that right now, I can't do this step, which is understandable, you want to start with asking for the time, asking for compliments, asking for other stuff, right? But honestly, doing that by yourself is going to be very difficult. You know, uh, what I did back in the days, I had there was a big group of people who did the same, right? So I found people and they pushed me into my first approaches. You know, because I always say doing that by myself is very. If I wouldn't have this community, I would never have been where I've been. Right? So there's either there's communities or there's coaches. These two things is is what I would recommend. Because doing that by yourself. <sighs> You know, it's. I think it's it's going to be difficult, all by do yourself. You, do you do most of your coaching online, or do you uh, do you do a lot in 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 the field actually? As a mix, it's a mix. For tomorrow, for example, I have a guy from Netherlands coming here for coaching. I have a guy from the US coming in April for coaching, uh, but a lot of online. Yeah, I would say like twenty percent in person, eighty percent online. Um. So. What's your usual uh, approach online with a new client? You know, how do you, how do you, um, I guess, uh, start with them, and how do you advance with them? Online, first, we always have like the foundations we do, which is like the mindset and understanding evolutionary psychology. Right, most people don't even understand like why they are why why they are attracted to us and why we are attracted to them. Right, they're completely different things. Right, women are very. Uh, confidence and status driven and we are very physical um, yeah physical looks driven visual right and um, there's a lot of confusion between these two right for example guys are like obsessed with their looks because they are obsessed with looks and women and women obsessed are with making money in Korea because they think that makes them attractive right? because they are attracted to that right so that's one big thing um, yes mindset foundations in general and then there's a practical part which is um, yeah we're going to talk about like approaching and um, desensitization, setting up online profiles properly. Um, and also Instagram is also a big thing, right? Because <clears throat> if you have a strong Instagram, it's definitely going to help you with with meeting people a lot, right? And then also the third one is the general lifestyle chapter, like a holistic approach, because as I said before, you want to have the foundations down. And so it's going to be like fashion, nutrition, in general lifestyle like what do you do discipline right do you have like porn issues for example do you watch porn do you do you have other deeper problems right we're looking at these as well you think that there's something that you do that might be unique that probably other coaches don't do to, when you teach with the uh, teacher clients i think what is unique about what i do is because i have more of an holistic approach i see i don't want to i don't want to talk bad on anyone but i see a lot of coaches they just talk dating right so they say they take a random guy you you come to the program and you're like okay this is like your curriculum you have to talk to 20 girls a week and then you have to talk and this is like your challenge you know and just like just talk 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 and this is your script and talk this you know and uh, it's way more complex than that you know than just um just throwing someone into approach because as i said if you're not groomed and if you're dressed like from a different century she's not even going to give you the time of the day Right, so we have to look at that as well, right? And then also, what I do with my clients is I I tell them to record themselves and then send them their recordings, so I can be, I can listen to what what's happening, 
So that's like the closest thing of me being next to them. OK, <clears throat> and online, have you got um, some special openers uh, like how do you how do you deal with a lot of the online issues like, uh, you know, women not responding after a message or two and this type of thing? What how do you how, what's the online the game like? Yeah, online is is obviously is, is a mess, I would say, right, because there's a lot of ghosting and flaking, whatever. You just have to increase your profile. Right. You have to have a really good profile, professional pictures, good profile, not just portraits, like showing stuff, what you're doing, actually showing yourself in the best in the best possible way, you know, then also doing some retouching on these photos. You know, nothing crazy, but a little bit. And yeah, it's really you can only portray yourself as good as possible. And then when it comes to texting, I think it's also all the value, like the initial profile. I don't actually don't believe really in text game. Because um, if the value is there, you can say whatever you want. You know, if she sees you as like this amazing dude, you can say the most boring stuff and she's still going to be like, OK, let's meet, you know. Um, so the first thing should that's like the foundation, like the profile and then the texting. Yeah, you can you can make it more interesting, but in generally. You, you can off you can come off very try hard if you if you try to do like some crazy text acrobatics. So typically uh, you like to have the client sort of present a very strong image and, and hopefully that carries through most of the, com the communication with the woman. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Because it's like you can talk a lot, but if your profile is like is not good, then it's not going to help you. Right? It's like you trying to buy a car. The car is just like a bad product, but the, the, the salesman is like telling and telling how good the product is you know, in the end. It's not going to be. It's not going to work. So what, tell me a little bit about how you uh, would deal with the, uh, you know, shy clients who are introverted, this type of thing. Well, how do you pull them out of their their uh, shell? Is it just throw them into into the throw them in the water to swim or do you have some uh, methods of, of loosening them up or uh, get building their confidence? Yeah, so there should be there should be some desensitization, right? I have actually have a big, big program about just um, desensitization, right? So where it's a, it depends on the level of shyness, right? Some guys, they are too afraid to ask someone for the time. And then other guys, they are too afraid to ask the number, right? So it's like there's different degrees, but there's a, there's a huge structure I have for, for everyone, right? So I never, I never really tell anyone like, hey, no, okay, this week you're going to approach five women, like this today you're going to approach five women, you know, because it's going to be too much. It's going to be overwhelming, right? So that's why we start with small desensitization actions. You know, for example, like asking for directions and then asking if they've been there before and then asking if they liked it. Right? Well, I'm assuming that most of the time you're with a client in person, usually just probably for just a weekend if, if it's in person. So, you know, that that uh, needs to progress relatively quickly, I would think, you know. Uh, yeah, but honestly, like if you have people in person, they are so committed that usually they just go straight for the approach. Like I never I never really had a client who. Who was just like, I can't do it, I can't do it because they are there, they paid money, they maybe even traveled sometimes 12, 12 sometimes 25 hours traveling to them be like, oh, I don't want to approach, you know, like the investment is already there. And that's that's a great thing about coaching because the investment is there. They are invested. So the 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 it's very difficult to make excuses if you're that invested, you know. So I guess once you've had them meet the woman, what what do you how do you bring them along and to develop the relationship? Uh, uh, I, I assume that some of them are there for just, a, a, you know, a a short term quick uh, experience and others are probably more looking for something more serious. How do you bring them along in that, you know, when they're, um, I guess, uh, not that experienced in, in those that part of the uh, of the interactions? Mm, yeah, I mean, first, first, you have to meet people, right? Like the more the more people you meet, the better. The more dates you go on, the better. If you want to find the perfect apple, you have to you have to see a lot of apples, basically, right? And um, yeah, having relationships is definitely super, super helpful, 
you know I see a lot of guys actually in, in this industry who who've been who are like in, yeah, in their 30s or 20s and they are hooking up a lot but they never had a girlfriend for me that's like a big red flag because they don't really understand they don't really have a deeper understanding you know they can't keep them around either right so and... so it's it's really i can't really teach them to i mean i can teach them to keep them longer right but most guys who come to me they either they want to get something like a girlfriend or they want to have a lot of experiences right within the relationship i can definitely help because i had two long ones but uh, and many short ones but that's uh, that's basically that's usually what i don't most guys don't come with me with relationship problems so they most so most of them are coming to you just to overcome the meeting problem to, to get to meet the women then yeah like they're single or they want higher quality so do you uh, do you have a, a specific um, process that you put them through, or is it, uh, or is each one sort of individually tailored? It's completely individual tailored, yeah, one on one. For now, I don't think I can do, <laughs> I don't think I can do one on one for too much longer. But um, I will. Right now, I'm doing one on one. I always want to have some one on one custom tailored, but at some point, it's going to be too much if you have yeah too many one-on-one -on -one guys but yeah it is so you're custom. not going to be doing you say you're not going to be doing one-on-one -on -one. you're planning to do um i guess more group coaching is that the idea i mean i'm always i'm always open to one-on-one -on -one. it's just going to be a bit more expensive then uh, i see so you're you're obviously doing very well then and the the price is going up is that the idea uh I mean, I basically have to. I basically have to do the the guy. I would do one on one. Usually, I would have to do a group thing. In the okay. in the in the in the near future. That's okay. that's the thing. Yeah. All right. And um, have you had have you have a lot of clients that come back for repeat sessions, or is usually one session and you you're able to uh, get them to where they want to be. When it comes to in person, you mean? Well, I guess it's it's uh, probably either both, you know, uh, in person. Oh, actually, and all. actually, I don't do sessions, right? I only do packages. So my package is five months. Oh, your packages are five months. So tell me a little bit more about what what's the process over the five months. The process, what what I said before. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna take at the foundations, the mindset part. So the guys actually gonna feel like grounded and confident again and like optimistic about their future when it comes to women then there's going to be a, the practical part where we talked about how do we desensitize how we can overcome how do we get in touch with 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 that side as well and then the the third one is the, the lifestyle pillar where people talk about where we talk about discipline and general habits fashion instagram fitness and these things and right? so that's why it's a lot and they always like all these things they happen they happen simultaneously like every session we might talk like depending on the guy for example if i have a guy who's like an amazing shape and he's like a fitness trainer we don't really have to talk about nutrition and fitness because this is kind of like ticked and so then we talk about other things right he's already he's already there on that that subject basically exactly everyone comes from a very, very different background you know that's why that's why uh, i like custom custom tailored coaching T tell me about uh, maybe one of your most difficult clients and, and how you were able to, uh, uh, I guess, get him success from your your uh, coaching. Mm -hmm. mm. Let me think, let me think. So, yeah, I had a guy who's in New Zealand. Uh, uh, he's in Australia, not New Zealand. He's in Australia and he is uh, from Nepal. And he's, yeah, he's very short. He's a minority and... The problems who come with it has has a has a strong accent as well, and the, all these things they don't they don't help you in these countries. And he yeah he managed to to approach woman on the bus station here and there, and I think within the first two weeks he yeah he took a girl home on the same day. Then he took a girl another girl home on on that, and he was just he was like because if you if you start doing that and you get your results your first results you're like your mind is blown. It's like it's like you see the matrix for the first time, you know, because suddenly you can just meet people everywhere, anywhere. It doesn't matter. 
and before you were we were always cons constricted to university school lucky some friend has like a cute friend whatever right and now it's like oh like you can just take whatever you want okay <laughs> so uh I guess basically you you get them to to realize that uh, you can meet people anywhere and uh, exactly anywhere and, anytime and anything can happen which is something they mm -hmm. didn't really expect or believe probably before until it happens to them exactly if you tell like a guy who has no idea about this you can meet a girl on the street and three hours later she's in your bed he's going to be like you're crazy you know but it happened to me like many times already so okay um all right were there any uh particular mentors that you've had over the course of your i guess education you mentioned rsd i mean was there someone in particular over there or with some other people that uh that uh, you learned from uh whether in the community or, or outside of it that uh you know you have some call it uh very impactful advice that really affected you maybe you can share some of that advice that that uh, helped mold your mold you to the person you are now yeah for sure there's definitely there's some guys who i when i started out in budapest who were like months or years ahead of me who pushed me into that and then when it comes to rsd there was there's owen cook who is um, definitely a huge influence in my life has been still is actually Mm. Yeah, Owen Cook, the other guys as well. And then who else is there? Tony Robbins, I would say. They're not in the industry, obviously, but they have an impact. Then there's there's just there's many, many influences. I would say Owen Cook, I would say is like the big one. Because he also he also understands that learning this is going to translate into every other every other area of your life right? if you are more socially skilled you're going to become better communicator with your friends and family you're going to be more better communicate in your job you know so everything just goes up and up and up you know and you want to you want to look better because you're getting more dates so you want to look better so this goes up and uh, if you are more charismatic and social you also have way more abilities to make money and then that goes up and it's just like everything goes up even though you were just you you got it like i got into this for the woman but you just go up and everything else goes up <clears throat> and that's what that's why i even teach that's why i'm passionate about this you know because you can you, everything goes up basically can you maybe share a few uh tidbits of wisdom and knowledge that you've picked up along the ways from either from some of these mentors or things that, you know, you've uh, learned somewhere in your life uh, that, that affect how you deal with women and, and your, your um, you know, just uh, things that, that make things that you fall back on as far as your, your concept of how you deal with people in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so one big thing is the process orientation, right? That's something what's, what's missing a lot these days, right? Where you, where you do something for the process, so, so, so you you do something to get to enjoy the process, right? And you understand that the result is not necessarily what matters. It's more about you actually putting in your best effort, right? And then also flow, flow state from playing soccer all my life. I understand flow a lot. And then I saw that that translates into socializing as well. And that was a big thing as well, that you can you can get into flow through socializing. And that's also a crazy one because then you suddenly start saying things that are not that come through you you don't even think about it you just come through it's just like you playing a sport and it just you just doing the right thing without thinking about it you know and that's um, there's a lot of spiritual stuff in there as well and then also learning like if you get rejected all the time which happens if you do that you become so much like you get such a thick skin and you have to face your your shadows your demons you know like all your self-doubt and everything is going to get triggered. So that was, that's also big. That's why these people who are doing this on a constant, on a daily basis, they are all just like, like the inner, the, the inner game is very strong. Well, I was, I was wondering if you have some specific uh, advice, like, um, 
you know how you how you would deal with a specific situation that uh, that would come up um, something that uh, a little bit more tangible for for someone who's listening to this interview they've they've come in, come away with you know that's a really good way to look at what you would do in that situation or what you would say in that situation something a little more uh, specific that uh, that uh, this is how Tobias would handle that you know mhm mm mhm mm. Oh, what's a good example? There's, there's like so many, there's so many. Mm. You mean, you mean like in conversation, in conversation with women? Could, or? could be, could be anything. For example, um, you know, uh, uh, a piece of advice that I picked up, for example, a long time ago was that um, uh, let her worry about you rather than you worry about her. You know, uh, a lot of times uh, you, uh, you know, you you meet a woman and you uh, maybe you you uh, feel that you've got to keep her knowing exactly what you're up to and where you are, so she doesn't think you're with some other woman. Like that's that's like worrying about you know what what she's worrying about. Let her worry about you. Mm -hmm. You know, let, you know that's that was a very big piece of advice that I picked up a long time. I was just curious if you have some things like that that some gems of wisdom that you can share. Okay. Yeah. That's that's exactly okay. Yeah. So yeah, as you said, right. So like, don't don't chase, right? Don't chase. Be, be cool if she like if someone pulls back you have to pull back as well right because um, if someone if someone pulls back and you you chase it's just gonna go away right there's a lot of there's a lot of um, old principles in there right like the hungry don't get fat for example right the hungry right. don't get fat is like if you're needy it's just gonna push everyone away right and that for example when it pours it rains right if it if you have a run you have a real run and um, also, if yeah, if you're having a good time, like people can sense it, right? And they they can they can just and there's also that women have a sixth sense, right? They have a sixth sense if a, if a guy is doing good, if he's feeling good, if he's powerful, if he's like confident, they can sense that, you know. And uh, one big thing is also like that the media these days is very. If you. It, it, this stuff no one teaches this stuff you know because it's too powerful i think that's why like in media you just see lgbtq be nice uh don't act up or you're gonna get a lawsuit basically right, right. and uh, and um that's why guys these days are so afraid of things right and they're like oh can i buy you flowers can i buy you dinner and they lead also that they lead with money right so they start they start as a provider so that's that's a good tip as well. There's like the the alpha and there's the provider, right? So the provider is the guy who who provides money and and safety and and nurture and everything. And then there's the alpha who is the actual attractive guy who <clears throat> who turns on basically. And most guys are only here in the provider. Hey, can I buy you flowers? Let's go for dinner. Can I be this? Can I be a good guy? And they forget this. But you have to have this. This is more important because this you can always do after. But you have to always start with the attractive guy. That's the big thing, and that's what I would say. 80, 90 percent of men they lack this, the 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 attractive guy, and they have this. But if you only have this, you're always gonna have problems. What do you do most of the time to make your clients uh, come across as being more the attractive guy? What what kind of uh, specific advice do you give them? Yeah, you have to you have to become the guy, right? You you don't attract what you want, you attract what you are. Right? So if you if you are lazy, if you are not taking care of yourself, if your nutrition is all over the place, and if you don't have any drive or anything that's going on, then why do you expect to be to meet a great girl? Right? Like you have to have a good product. Right? So like if, if the product is good is not good then make the product good, right? Because if you want to sell yourself the product, you want to have a good product. If only the marketing is good, it's gonna sooner or later it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna fail anyway. So you want to have the good product, and then you want to have good marketing. Most guys <clears throat> who get into this, many guys they have a good product, but they have bad marketing because they don't know how to talk. They are like shy. They have they are very rational. So that's the thing, right? But yeah, you have to, you have to become, you have to step up, you know, you have to step it up and become the guy. And how to become the guy? Yeah, it's very, it, because it's evolutionary, right? So strength, confidence, uh, leadership, 
these things. That's why that's why women are attracted to fighters or guys who are in prison, right? Because they have these these strong traits. Right. Okay. Well, um, you know, I guess uh, maybe you want to tell people a little bit about um, uh, about your your coaching and your uh, and if you have any products or anything like that that you want to tell them about. And uh, I think that would be something that people would be curious to follow up and learn more from you. Yeah, so I do five months, as I said, five months coaching for uh, one-on-one. And if anyone's interested, let me know. But um, yeah, I mean, as I said, it's going to be very limited for the one-on-one because at some point I have to do some group coaching, but I always want to have the the one-on-one component anyway, so I can give specific specific um, yeah feedback to anyone. But yeah, that's basically what I do. Five months, one-on-one. Or if anyone wants to come to Barcelona, Barcelona is actually the best city I've ever seen from the seven countries I lived in. And uh, the many cities I've seen, Barcelona is the best city for learning this and for doing this also if you're experienced. So I can only recommend to come here as well. And uh, yeah, I work on a daily or two days, three days, four days, even do seven days uh, basis with guys where we do like five hours a day, two hours, two and a half hours break, two and a half hours. And then we do, uh, yeah, approaches and analyzing everything. Yeah. So that's your, I guess, your your primary um, um, method of uh, helping guys out is basically just is, is this this five month program. That's that's really all that you offer. You don't have products or things like that in addition, or or do you have books or or videos or whatever? No, I don't. I don't have a video course. I don't have a, a book, not yet. Okay. Uh, because because um, yeah, I mean a video a video course is very is never it's never going to be custom tailored. Right, sure. Right. And that's why, um, I mean, I offer a lot of videos. I have a lot of conversations of me talking to women recorded. So people get access to that as well in the in the coaching. All right. Well, I think uh, you've, you know, shared a few interesting uh, uh, bits about how guys have improved through your coaching and your teaching. And I want to thank you for all of that. And, um, you know, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll be uh, getting some people inquiring about you and uh, you'll be hearing from uh, from some of the cliffs list readers uh, and viewers after this interview is posted so awesome thanks yeah again. Thank, thanks for having me good so anyway i'll stop it now and we'll uh, we'll uh, be in touch for sure take care